I guess when I heard, uh, you know, Carcass and Cannibal Corpse, you know, Chris Barnes, uh, Symphonies of Sickness um, was the most, uh, out of anybody or anything, that was the most influential to me. And I ended up doing these, like, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, I started doing these, like, tonguey, like, it looked like I was just sticking out my tongue like, like an idiot. But really it was like this air displacement thing. Uh, that's the only way I could put it. That's what I used to call it. And now people call them zombie vocals and all sorts of other tunnel throat or whatever. All sorts of other stupid shit. That all actually came down, uh, came from me trying to emulate that sound of uh, Jeff Walker and Bill Steer together, you know, from um, early carcass stuff. It was just this, this wall of sound. It was extremely... It was kind of frightening, you know? Like, that's the history of at least that part of the vocal. Uh, but gutturals, yeah, you know, the, the big one that was a big influence on me was uh, Joe uh, from Broken Hope. suck at saying his last name, so I'm not gonna even try to butcher it. The first time I tried it, uh, it, you know, it hurt a little bit, and I was just like, oh, fuck, how do these guys do it? And then I took a mic. <laughs> I had this karaoke machine my mom had, uh, that had like, you know, you, you play it, the, the one tape here, and it can record on here, and I would actually, uh, me and my friends had a joke band called Anal Flatulence, <laughs> and I, it was just trying to rip off Carcass, you know, and, um, musically and I would we would record the music I played drums and we'd record the music on one uh, side and then I would uh, or play the music on record it play the music on one side and then record the vocals and after you get like that second or third generation of like layering up the vocals and shit it just sounded like the most disgusting thing ever and I was just like holy shit this is even more brutal than you know carcass and shit but then I realized Oh, it's because I'm holding the mic like this, and any mother can sound brutal if they're cupping the shit out of it. Is there's something about that? So, um, doing that made me think. Well, if I, at age 16, I can do what this dude is doing at 20 something, there's something wrong with that, you know. Uh, so, I right then and, and ever since I focused more on trying to project and trying to do it um, without having to do the full cup. You know? I ride up on the ball, but that's just, I can't help it, it's just uh, instinctual. I just always do that. I would practice these in my bedroom. I, well, like I said, I had this karaoke machine, and uh, you know what, I used to, I used to take uh, <laughs> like old Megadeth, uh, you know, like when bands used to do um, instrumentals. <laughs> Ever, you know, like, I don't remember if Testament had one or whatever, but I would take the instrumentals from <laughs> the big bands you know, that I was listening to, and it, it, whether it was Nuclear Assault or, uh, you know, Megadeth or whatever it was, and I would, <laughs> I would do vocals over them, and and I, I, I called the band the Infected, <laughs> and I did like vocals like over the, the thing with this karaoke machine, and uh, I would make my own tape layouts and cassette, you know, the the layouts. I was always, I mean, I started doing that shit, 15, 16, you know, and. Uh, I'm still doing it now at 44. <laughs> the expansion of those kind of tones and stuff came mostly from um, experience in touring is really what did it. Touring, uh, being the band that that plays, you know, shitty little dive bars all the way up to, uh, you know, big rooms with huge PAs and a, a lot of slap back and it really depends on your monitors and all that stuff. But I would hear overtones uh, like I guess melodic overtones, I would hear notes, you know, when I'm just doing a scream, some, where to me I just feel like I'm just, just go as high as you can, you know, but I would hear these fucking, you know, the slap back or the reverb trails or whatever. I would hear like overtones in that. And, that, and over a few years I was just like, what if I, you know, actually tried screaming in key, you know, and making actual notes out of these. And really because of boredom, <laughs> you know, you keep doing the, and the ah for so many years. Um, I'm, I'm just, a, like I said, I'm a really impatient person and um, just kind of, kind of got bored, you know. I wanted to do something different and um, I took those overtones and started 
implementing them into actual like um, people call it clean vocals. It's, it's not. It's if you were to solo it, you'd realize, oh, it's actually you know more like some of the thrash bands. You know, uh, I, I I'm sure it. A lot of it also comes from that kind of stuff. Um, as far as like, is this acceptable to do? Is this okay to do? And I wasn't sure. We when we put out Monolith, I was just like, well. It's been a good one, boys. <laughs> Here goes nothing. F we'll see what happens. And luckily for us, I guess, people and Metal Blade and their uh, interests, uh, it, it worked out.